Good morning, dear students. I hope you all are doing well. Myself, Miss Akanksha More, and I will be teaching you all science. So today, we shall begin with the first lesson that is living world and classification of microbes. Before we begin the chapter, let's recall a few questions. Number one, what is the hierarchy for classification of living organisms? The hierarchy for classification of living organisms is the arrangement of taxonomic groups in descending order depending upon their taxonomic rank. Now here, taxonomic means concerned with the classification of organisms. Number 2. Who invented binomial system of nomenclature? The binomial system of nomenclature was invented by Carl Linnaeus. Number 3. Which levels of hierarchy are considered while writing the name in binomial nomenclature? While writing the names in binomial nomenclature, the following levels of hierarchy were considered kingdom, division, class, order, family, genus, species. So now let's begin with our first subtopic that is biodiversity and need of classification. Biodiversity refers to all the variety of life that can be found on earth. Last year, we learned that all the living organisms on earth have adapted according to geographic regions, food ingestion, defense, etc. Now, your food ingestion means taking in food and defense means fight against enemy. While adapting, many differences are observed in the organisms of the same species too. According to 2011 census, around 87 million species of living organisms are found on the earth, including land and sea. To study such a vast number, it was essential to divide them into groups. So, groups and subgroups were created, considering the similarities and differences among the living organisms. This process of dividing living organisms into groups and subgroups is called biological classification. I repeat, the process of dividing living organisms into groups and subgroups is called biological classification. Now here you all can see a picture. He is Mr. Robert Harding Whittaker. Robert Harding Whittaker, 1920-1980, was an American ecologist. In 1969, he divided living organisms into five groups. Animalia, Plantae, Protista, Fungi and Bacteria. For the classification, Whittaker considered following criteria. Number 1. Complexity of cell structure. Now here again it's, it gets divided into two types. Prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Prokaryotic meaning they do not have 
membrane bound nucleus or we can say well defined nucleus or any other organelle eukaryotic means they have a nucleus number 2 complexity of organisms again it gets divided into two types unicellular and multicellular unicellular means they have single cell whereas multicellular means they have multiple or many cells number 3 mode of nutrition under this also we have number 1 plants autotrophic and photosynthetic autotrophic means organisms which make their own food now we all know that plants make their own food and hence they are autotrophic number 2 fungi saprophytic absorption from dead organisms saprophytic meaning organisms which depend on dead or decaying organic matter we'll take a normal life example if we keep a moist bread aside for many days we will see that the surface of the bread changes which means fungi is now present there so they are saprophytic animals heterotrophic and ingestive heterotrophic depending on other living things for food now we have seen animals that obviously they cannot make their own food hence they are always depended on others for their food and hence they are known as heterotrophic ingestive means food number 4 life cycle now under this also we have plants animals and fungi now plants are the producers again why producers because they produce their own food animals are the consumers why consumers because they consume the food by made by others or they depend on other living things for their food next is fungi they are the decomposers decomposers meaning they depend on dead organic matter for their food they decompose it that is why they are known as decomposers phylogenetic relationship now this means stating relationship between organisms or a group of organisms under this we have prokaryotic to eukaryotic and unicellular to multicellular so these are the five criteria which are undertaken by robert harding whitaker i'll repeat it again number 1 complexity of cell structure number 2 complexity of organisms number 3 mode of nutrition number 4 lifestyle number 5 phylogenetic relationship now here you all can see one chart the same chart is there in your textbook as well and it is very very important so i hope you all studied well living organisms are classified into two prokaryotes and eukaryotes now as i had already explained you all prokaryotes means they do not have a well defined nucleus whereas eukaryotes means they have a nucleus now prokaryotes include unicellular organisms which are included in the kingdom monera eukaryotes 
are unicellular organisms or multicellular organisms unicellular organisms are included in kingdom protista multicellular organisms are included in the kingdom fungi where cell wall is present but organisms cannot perform photosynthesis multicellular organisms are also included in the kingdom plantae where cell wall is present and organisms can perform photosynthesis multicellular organisms are also present in the kingdom animalia but there is no cell wall i hope you all understood whatever i tried to explain you all today in the next video we shall be discussing more about the five kingdom kingdom system in detail thank you